My name is Melissa and I have been living with atopic dermatitis, also known as eczema, although most people may not realise I have this condition. I've had it for most of my life. I'm making this video to create some more awareness on this often debilitating condition. What is eczema? Atopic dermatitis, also known as eczema, is a condition that makes your skin red and itchy. It's common in children but can occur at any age. Atopic dermatitis is long-lasting, chronic, and tends to flare periodically. It may be accompanied by asthma or hay fever. No cure so far has been found for atopic dermatitis. I can tell you from experience the itch is at times unbearable and it can be hard to stop scratching. I was born with mild eczema and it affected my joints on my elbows and my knees and mostly my hands. Most times you could hardly tell I had eczema, but I did often itch in the night and as a baby. When I was a child, eczema wasn't as common as it is today. It now affects 20% of the population worldwide. I had red, rough patches and the treatment was topical steroid creams. I was always told I would most likely grow out of it, but I actually grew into it in my teenage years and it just seemed to get worse as I got older, affecting more areas of my body. I've battled through the years using topical steroid creams, moisturisers, soaking in bleach baths or salt baths, and when I was 18 I was given steroid tablets called prednisolone, which caused weight gain and only temporary relief before flaring again. And then later, I climbed up the ladder and went onto immunosuppressants such as azathioprine and cyclosporin. As you can see in these pictures, I was mostly clear when on the medication. However, they couldn't be used long term because of side effects. Having this condition can greatly impair your physical well-being as well as your mental well-being. There have been many times where I felt depressed because of my skin condition. Lots of the time I've had restless, sleepless nights, and often this affected my school life, social life and work life. I did have some clear periods, even without medication, but gradually the flares would come back and they crept to other areas of my body that I never even had eczema before. Most recently, including my face and neck, and it just worsened. How did this happen? I found only recently some great resources about steroid withdrawal, or red skin syndrome, which is an iatrogenic condition, meaning that the condition is caused by medication. These particular sources explain everything so clearly that suddenly things started to click and it made me realise that I may be going through this like so many others. So what I have been experiencing for most of my teenage and adult life is not even eczema but in fact it could be steroid addiction and withdrawal. I'm grateful to have found them because doctors and dermatologists dismissed this condition. I only really started looking into topical steroid addiction or withdrawal in 2021 when I became pregnant and my eczema worsened again to the point where I couldn't cope. Locums and doctors were prescribing steroids for my face such as Elecon, Umivate and even Betnovate and I was being told to put it on my arms, face and neck but nothing resolved. I was constantly shedding skin and flaking and itching and my skin couldn't retain moisture. And being pregnant with hyperemesis and dealing with this was too much for me. I was getting desperate, so finally I went to Guy's Hospital in London where they said they would put me back on cyclosporin 
They signed me off work and despite being on cyclosporin, I have sometimes still had flared days. Is it possible that I'm going through a topical steroid addiction and now withdrawal because I've now stopped using the creams? I'm pretty sure I'm going through this because some of the symptoms I have experienced definitely fit the bill. Um, even though I haven't been diagnosed with steroid withdrawal by a dermatologist, they've actually told me it's a rare thing and that steroids are perfectly safe to use, even when I get like a spot or say an infection, a boil. They'll say, oh, put some Umivate on it because it's inflamed. Um, I've had the red sleeves, swollen eyelids, even now, okay, got it now. Red flares that match the thermal imaging, so where your veins are on your face, where you get heat, like in this graph. Swollen lymph nodes sometimes in armpits and groin. So I found a cream that seems to be working for me at the moment because I always find that when you use a cream for too long they stop working and then you have to change creams and it can be really frustrating because then you're spending money, the cream doesn't work, then you don't use it, you have to buy another one. Um, and I just want to say as well what might work for you or for me might not work for somebody else. But it's one that I'm really finding helpful at the moment and it's really helped even just after a few applications is the E45 Eczema Repair Cream. And I've been putting it on the places where I think I'm having the topical steroid withdrawal, so my face, my neck and also my arms. And I think I can already see a big difference. So I've stopped using Elecon and all steroids for about a week now and when I first stopped using them I was really red like in this picture and it was so hot and sore and dry and itchy and now a week later I can see that there has been an improvement with my arms, um, my neck and my face still get a little bit patchy sometimes but nothing compared to that red um, sleeves and completely being covered and like in agony. Um, so I am on cyclosporin because my skin is was too bad and because I'm pregnant um, I couldn't carry on like that going through a pregnancy, growing a baby and going through that. So the dermatology in Guy's Hospital did say that, well, we'll, we'll just monitor you very closely and um, put you on that. So um, it's not really what I wanted, but I couldn't carry on the way I was. But baby seems to be fine. Um, I'm using moisturiser as well. Um, I know there are people out there that, said they have a no moisture therapy treatment uh didn't really work for me i i couldn't not do that and i couldn't not drink enough water because i'm because i'm pregnant but another cream that i found that's really good is apriderm oat cream so it's like a vino except there's no paraffin in this one no SLS, um, it's alcohol free, fragrance free and colour free. I find with the Vino it's a bit more commercial and there's paraffin and there's other stuff in there that I didn't get on with. And this one is cheaper and bigger so it's actually better than the Vino I think. So far I've had good results with it. It also says that it's suitable from birth. So yeah, it's something that's been working for me. It's just going, it's just carrying on like that. Doing affirmations as well, doing positivity affirmations every day, also to change my mindset. It helps a lot I think compared to in the past when I felt really 
you know, depressed and that's helping, keeping me going, keeping me motivated to get through this. Hopefully in the very near future I'll just be so much better than I was before and have been and be clear and free. <laughs> My hands as well. One thing I found really useful is using a sanitizer called Natrazan when my hands are like this, especially during pandemic COVID when we're constantly washing our hands. I find that this sanitizer is much more better than using alcohol sanitizers that really sting and inflame my hands. So this one is um, said to be natural because this ingredient is found in our own immune systems. This is like typical elephant skin on my hands. It's been like this for maybe a week now. It's a typical symptom as well. I'll show you on the other one too. Can't even wear my wedding ring or any jewelry. So this is a month of now not using any steroid creams. So I've got no filters, no nothing. I don't know if you can see how red I am here, but my face is just totally red and peeling and it just feels like it is on fire. My arms as well, not as, although not as bad today, but they've also been very dry, peeling, red sleeves. I'm coming to the conclusion on my own that I am going through this red skin syndrome, withdrawal from steroids, maybe still even addiction, I don't know. But either way, what I'm experiencing was never my normal eczema. And therefore, it's got to be that. It really disheartens me that dermatologists still don't really believe us or acknowledge it when we tell them that we think we're going through this because of all this. And I would say, you know, try it yourselves. Try these creams yourselves and see what happens to your skin. You know? It's still the same answers all the time. We don't think that you have steroid damage. It's just very active eczema. And I can tell you, my eczema was never like this before. I was never, ever like this. And the only way I can cool this down now at the moment is with an ice pack because nothing is working. Even the tablets that I'm on. And that also makes me think even more that it's withdrawal because before when I was on cyclosporin or whatever, you know, it worked. I wasn't like this. I was clear. And this time round, nothing's, nothing's making it go away. And that's what everybody says that went through it. Nothing will make it go away. It just runs its course. And it's so itchy. I'm just so... Just so itchy. So hot. And frustrated. And tired with it. It's really enough to drive you batshit crazy, you know, with the itching and the excessive shedding of skin. And then the repetitive cycle. And, you know, 
I can really understand when people out there that have gone through this and are going through this want to call it quits because it really is a lot to deal with. And when you don't feel like you're getting any better and you're just going round and round in circles, it can really take a toll on your health and how you feel about yourself and how how you see yourself as well and how others see you and how you feel. And if it weren't for my family and for good friends and Ramel, I probably would be, you know, maybe not even... I've, I've gone this far in my life going through all of this in cycles because it really does affect you and I've got a baby to think about now as well so I'm trying to stay positive I'm really trying and I've just got to keep thinking to myself and telling myself that it's going to get better and there is light at the end of the tunnel and that I will be like my old normal self again but it's just it's a marathon it's 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 when when you when you think you're getting there and you're not quite there yet and you just get exhausted and tired and sometimes you just think oh I can't get to that finish line but you just have to keep going but it's exhausting anyway I'll um I'll be putting up more progress videos and we'll see how how far I've come how do you feel though when like I can't do stuff and you have to help me a lot more than you should really have to and seeing me like this step up really. Have you ever felt like that? That you no. ever wanted to leave? No. Never. What are you making? Uh, soup. Bone broth with seaweed and veg and miso. <laughs>